Hello and welcome to another Alice 3 tutorial. So, so far we have covered opacity, speaking, moving in orientation, and advanced camera options. We also covered properties in Alice. Now, since I made this video, the creators of Alice have actually come out with 3.2. And so the main difference between Alice 3.1 and 3.2 is that the properties have actually switched locations. Um, so I'm going to have to do another video showing you where the properties are. The techniques we learned in this video, and actually all of the videos in these last two series, are the fundamentals of programming, and so everything still works, uh, just the location of the properties has changed. So when I do that extra video, I will post a link up here so that you can find it, and that should be the only difference between Alice 3.1 and the 3.2. So we've also done math and uh, using addition, and we showed how you could use the techniques we did to do subtraction, multiplication, and division. And we used random variables, which means when you run the program, every time you run it, your two numbers are going to be different. It's not going to be 2 plus 2 every time. The next time it might be 5 plus 7 or 6 plus 9. It changes every time. So today, we're going to do two videos uh, more more on math, but we're going to do two videos, one on for loops and the other on while loops. And for loops in Alice are called count loops, so we will do that. And then in later videos, we will cover more advanced math techniques using parameters. And parameters are, they are advanced, but it's going to be a pretty simple explanation, something anyone can follow along. And just, just because a topic is advanced doesn't mean it's not easy to learn. Uh, and then later we'll do a best programming methods video. So anyway, let's jump right into it. So this is the program that we had created before. Let's just run it and see what it does. We, uh, as you recall, wait two seconds, then the camera moves forward, the fish says hello, you must answer the questions, and then he asks us a question. In this case, what's 9 plus 6? Remember those two numbers, 9 and 6, they'll change each time we run it. Um, so we answer 15, we click OK, he tells us we got it right, and then he says you won. And that's what we would expect if we would have gotten an incorrect answer. He would have said this option right here, sorry, that isn't correct. But at this point, our program only asks a single question. It'll be different each time, but it only asks one question. But he said you have to answer the questions. So the where we're running our program is the, the direction we're programming is we want him to ask multiple questions. However, um, we don't have that set up yet. So that's going to be what we'll do this time. Now, first I'm going to show you one technique for uh, copying a lot of code so that you can ask the question multiple times. So to do that, um, we could, uh, starting here with num1 all the way down to the if-else statement, these six blocks are the code that asks the question. First you calculate your two numbers, then you calculate the answer, then the fish asks us what is num1 plus num2, and then we enter that value into the uh, pop-up box that appears. Then, finally, it checks if we got the answer correct. That is, if the real answer is equal to what you entered. If it's correct, the fish says, good job. If it's incorrect, he says, sorry, it isn't correct. So these six blocks of code are what we need to duplicate. Now, we could just right-click and copy to clipboard each one of these six blocks, and then they would be copied up to this clipboard in the top right corner, and then we would drag it down. But if we want to ask the question, or if we want to ask three different math questions, we'll have to duplicate all six of these three different times, which is going to end up being a lot of work. So I'm going to show you first an easier approach. So I'm taking this down here at the bottom, there's the do in order. It's the first of these uh, general programming uh, blocks that are down at the bottom. So I'm going to drag that do in order up above that num1 and just drop it in. And then I'm going to drag those six blocks of code into this do in order. So I've got five and six. Now, just a quick note, do in order, all it means is do this line of code first, and then this line of code, and then this one, and this one, do it in order. It's 
pretty obvious. Um, and our program isn't changed at all when we drag this in. Because actually, if you scroll up to the top of this method, see there's already a do in order? When you create a method in Alice, it automatically has a do in order up at the top, which means it's going to run this one, then this one, then this one. It'll just sequentially go down your thing. So all we've done is we've now grouped these six blocks of code together. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to right click on the do in order. I'll click on the do, right click on it and go to copy to clipboard. Now see there's something in this clipboard up here. And what it is, is actually, it, it shows me when I scroll over and wait a sec, it shows me it's that do in order with the six blocks of code. So I'm going to click that and drag it down to the bottom. Uh, it won't let me go down. So I'm going to put it above this do in order, drop it in, and now we've got our do in order that we just copied in and our do in order that we had before. And we were able to, with just one click of a button and a drag, we were able to copy these six blocks of code. So this is the first question he'll ask and then the fish will ask this which is the second question. So let's run that and see if it works. So we wait two seconds, we go forward, he appears, he says you have to answer the questions and then he asks us the first question. What's 8 plus 5? So we enter 13, we click OK, he says good job you got it right and asks us another question. Now it's randomly choosing numbers. So it randomly chose the same two numbers. That doesn't happen all that often. Um, and it's, it's just a random thing. So it's, it's not going to ask you the same question every time. This is just a once in a lifetime type of thing. So we answer it again. He says, good job, you got it right. And then he says, you've won. So this is great if we have a bunch of code and we want to duplicate it um, to run more than once. But, what happens if we want to run this, say, 10 times? In, in this example that I've just shown you, we'd have to right-click and copy to clipboard. We'd have to do that nine more or eight more times to get him to ask 10 questions. And at that point, like, our code is already getting pretty long. If we actually did that, our code would be super long. So there's got to be a better way to do it because all we want to do is run exactly the same code multiple times. We don't want to change anything. We just want to run these six blocks of code multiple times. So there is a way to do it. But uh, let, me, let me show you what I'm talking about first. So over here we have our six blocks of code and the first technique to run it multiple times would be just to duplicate it a bunch of times. Here I copied it four times so it's a long block of code. But a better approach, a second approach, would be if we wanted to take the, to run these six blocks of code and then loop back to the start and do it again. And then loop back to the start and do it again. So basically go in a circle around these blocks of code as many times as we want. So let's go back to the program. So the, the way to do loops are actually down at the bottom these three different options, count, while, and for each in. And we're going to be covering count in this video and while in the next video. Uh, for each in is more advanced and it has to do with arrays. We may cover that in a later video, but for right now we're, we're good. So I'm going to take this count and I'm going to drag it up here and just choose a random number, say choose three. And then I'm going to take this do in order and I'm going to drag it into it. And really fast, I have this do in order that I copied before. I'm just going to right click it and delete it because we don't need it right now. So what this says is count up to three. And this code, these six blocks are inside. So what that means is run these six blocks three times run all six blocks, when you get down to the bottom, loop back up to the top, run it a second time, loop back up to the top, run it a third time, and then go on to whatever's next. So this is not a do in order, this is a loop where it's going to do it in order but then it's going to loop around a couple times. So let's run it and see if it got it, if, if this works. You always want to run your code uh, after you do something different just to make sure that it still works because it's really easy to make a mistake and if you happen to make a mistake 
and you don't check every step, then you can make like five or ten steps and then not be sure which one of those steps you made the error in. So it's always a good idea once you've done something, run the code and see how it works. So this is what he asked us, what's 14 plus 9? So we answer 23, we click OK. Good job, you got it right. He asked us another answer, what's 15 plus 6? We enter 21, he says good job, you got it right. He asks us another answer, what's 5 plus 6? Answer that one, good job, you got it right. And now he says you've won. So we can see that our code is working and that this count loop is doing exactly what it's supposed to do. It's counting um, or looping these uh, through this three times. Now, if I wanted to have it go more or less, I could choose a different number. I could have it go zero times and then it wouldn't run at all. One times, two times, three times. Down here, I can choose a custom whole number and enter something like 22 or nine. I can basically choose however many times I want this code to run that I want. So I'm gonna click cancel because right now three is fine. One other thing that, so that's basically how to use um, count loops. Now, one other thing, I said that we were going to do for loops, but Alice calls them count loops. I want to show you something, uh, just a kind of an aside to show you that count loops and for loops are actually the same thing. If you study a different programming language such as C++ or Java or PHP, one of one of the other programming languages, you'll encounter the same technique of a of a loop that just goes around a certain number of times, but they'll be called for loops. So just to show you it's the same thing, I'm gonna go up to the window bar, I'm gonna go down to preferences, and here where it says programming language, I can change the appearance from Alice to Java. Now, this isn't going to change my code at all. It's just going to change the way it looks uh, so that it looks more like Java. So I'm going to click on that just temporarily. And you can see that once I did that, some things changed. For example, up here in the delay, instead of it just being this delay 2.0, there's now these parentheses around the 2.0 and it ends with a semicolon. In this line, instead of it just being this camera move and orient to this blackboard, there's now a parentheses around it and it ends with a semicolon. In fact, most of these have added parentheses around the uh, property or parameter and end with a semicolon. And all that is is an appearance thing, but it's the way that you program in Java. Every time you're referencing something that goes into a procedure, you surround it with parentheses. And every time you end a line of code, you have to type a semicolon. So it's just an aesthetic thing. But down here, what used to be called count now has a lot of extra stuff. And it looks like what is, surra what is surrounded by the parentheses is actually the word for. So that means that our counts loop has turned into a for loop. Now it's still going to do exactly the same thing. It just is now called a for loop because they're trying to make it look more like Java. And in Java and most other programming languages, you don't have the count, you have the for. Uh, and that's what does the loop. Now these other parameters aren't super important right now. If we do a, a future video on how to uh, transition into Java, then I, I may cover what these are. But the important thing for you to know is that this number right here is how many times you're looping and that for and count are the exact same thing. Now, for aesthetic reasons, I'm going to go back to window preference programming language and change it back into Alice because we don't need the this extra aesthetic um, for, for what we're doing. It uh, kind of clutters up our screen and ca can make it somewhat more, less readable. So I'm just going to go back to Alice and so, so and really fast I'm going to do a preview of our next video doing while loops and I'm going to start with a question. So right now we can, do, we can run this however many times we want. We can run it 1, 2, 3, 10, 15, 100. However many times we want, we can run this thing. However, every time we run it, uh, you're either going to get a correct or an incorrect answer. 
and there's no way to really check how many correct answers you have. What if we wanted this to run until you got three or four correct answers? And once you got three or four correct answers, we wanted this to stop and then go on to the blue fish saying you've won. Well, we can't really do it this way, and even if we, if we added some, some code to make it do that, count loops by themselves, or for loops, aren't set up to run that way. It would be somewhat complicated to do. However, using the while loop, we're going to be able to do that pretty quickly and efficiently. So stay tuned for that next video, and I will see you next time.